What is up all you cool cats? Again, welcome back to Platinum Zero, and welcome back to Skyrim Remastered, as I've decided to name it. It's like remastered, but bastard. Anyways, that just gem of a joke aside, we're back. Hi. Now I can finally complain about this game. Like I said last time, I do find Skyrim to be a good game, I just don't like it. So we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about it in a step-by-step -step analysis. First step. The RPG elements. I just don't like them because they're bad. So, in The Elder Scrolls, you play as a character. You name them, you create the face, and usually you create their class. I say usually. Because in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, which is the game I'm talking about today, if you, you know, didn't notice, you don't customize your character's class at all. The only real character class customization you get is choosing your race at the beginning of the game, which gives you different, like, s skills, like, slight change to skills and stuff. But other than that, there's nothing really, except for maybe... The stone things that you see uh, right after you leave the the first area you're in. I don't even remember the name of the first area. Jesus. The place that you are supposed to get your head cut off, but a dragon comes in, it ruins everything. That place. For some reason, in... After you leave that place, there's three stones you can click on that represent the different, uh, star signs from the previous games. Except this time, you don't get to choose which star sign you, uh, were born under. You just click on the stones, and most of the time, most people only use those, the, one of the first three stones, because you can only have one effect on you at a time, which makes sense. And the effect that most people choose are the ones that they they choose to that they're gonna level up at the beginning of the game there's the thief stone the warrior stone and the mage stone which each one affects which skills are gonna level up faster thief stone levels up sneak skills and stuff like that uh the warrior stone levels up anything having to do with you know fighting and the mage stone levels up things to do with magic and I think this system is terrible because like I said you will mostly just choose the one that has to do with the skills you want to level up faster and then never interact with any of the stones in the future because their effects kind of aren't as good some of them are really good but you want to level up your skills faster and also you have to hunt them down because unlike the previous games where you could just choose to be born under a specific star sign you have to find them in the environment so you'll just stick with the first three because they're the easiest to get and also kind of in a way the most useful be because you want to level up faster because you want to get more skills because the skills are super useful and most people keep on their one main style of play that usually devolves to just stealth and arrows because bow and arrows are one of the best ways to kill enemies in the game due to the fact that you can just get them from long range and stealth in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is one of the most overpowered skills to have in Skyrim, stealth isn't just a viable option. At some point, it becomes the only option. If you level up stealth high enough, you're completely invisible and can do whatever you want. Because no one will see you. You can crouch down in front of enemies who are currently fighting you, and they will lose your position instantaneously. Stealth... In Skyrim, it's a little bit overpowered, and in Elder Scrolls 6, wherever that game is going to take place, please, please nerf stealth. I love me some stealth, but 
I definitely think that just stealth is just much too strong in Skyrim. Now, I wanted to go a bit more in depth about my complaints about the lack of a character class system. In Oblivion, you can either choose from a preset set of classes, you know, you got warriors, bard, mage, thief, yada yada yada, that would each give you different skill perks, kind of, like uh, extra points in certain skills, or you can create your, excuse me, you can create your own class and choose which skills are stronger, etc, etc, etc. And that was awesome. The, sadly, it was a bit of a step back from Morrowind, even though it was kind of improved at the same time. Because in Morrowind, you took, you could choose to take a questionnaire, which would generate a class, or choose one based on the answers you gave to each of the questions, which I think is really awesome. You could choose a preset class, or you can make your own class. In Skyrim, you choose your race, and then you leave the, the, the place that's being attacked by the dragon, which I think is way worse because of the fact that in Oblivion or Morrowind, you can choose the character you're going to play as at first, and it would affect the way you would play the game immediately, whereas in Skyrim, everyone's playing the same for the first part of the game. I, uh, you just get weapons that are on corpses and then you use them against other people to try and escape the place that's being burned down by the dragon and then after you leave that's when you start trying out new things but for the beginning of the game everything is the exact same which kind of sucks because the ability to create your class before you even really start the game kind of gave you that a really good like RPG feel and made you feel like you know <coughs> it made replaying the game much much more enjoyable due to the fact that like you didn't feel like you were doing the same thing at the start of the game every single time you were constantly changing you were thinking oh I want to try this out and you didn't have to wait a couple minutes into the gameplay to actually be able to try out your new character build no you just started and thought, okay, I'm gonna choose to distribute my points differently and see that how that affects my gameplay. Or I'm gonna choose this class instead, because I want to know what that feels like. Another thing that I wanted to complain about that doesn't really fit in to the other kind of categories that my these this series is gonna be in, like the set cat you know what I mean. It's the feeling of kind of world permanence, I guess you'd call it, maybe? Where, you know, when you become a member of the Thieves Guild, all guards will kind of be a bit more wary around you and be a bit more gun-ho when it comes to you because of the fact that they know that you're part of the Thieves Guild because you're wearing the armor, or, you know, rumors have been spreading around about the fact that you're in with the Thieves Guild. Whereas Skyrim kind of has this, but it has it worse, in my opinion. Worse than just anything else. When you do something that would affect the public's view of you, such as joining the Thieves Guild, saving the entire world, you know, donating to a charity or something, the only thing that changes is what people say around you when you walk past them, you know, the random, you, you, like, for example, that annoying stupid meme that was passed around ages ago when Skyrim was, like, a new game. There's, there's, I used to be very sure like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. You know that one? That's a phrase that's stated whenever you pass by an NPC. Guard, every once in a while, they'll say that. But the reason why that exists in the game is so that you know, you kind of feel a more immersive world. Characters are constantly, like, greeting you as you pass by, or maybe advertising some of their store or something, something in their store or something. Stuff like that. It gives, it makes the world feel a bit more living, like it's real. It gives a bit of tangibility to everything. But, in Skyrim, 
when you would join a, a guild or do something that affects the world, the only thing that that really affects, other than, you know, maybe a free home or a place to stay, I mean, or, you know, a new NPC that will follow you, is the fact that some of the dialogue that you've passed by, that you pass by, when some of the dialogue that happens when you pass by NPCs will change slightly, but you still get other pieces of dialogue that th would cause situations like, for example, joining the Thieves Guild makes guards wary of you, and they'll constantly say, like, oh, I recognize that armor, you're one of the Thieves Guild, aren't you? Which makes sense, you want that to happen, but then, when you go saving the world, they'll still treat you like garbage when you're wearing the Thieves Guild armor immediately after praising you for saving the world. Excuse me. So, you'd walk past the guard, and you'd hear them say something like, Thanks to you, not only have you saved our world, but our very souls. And then, Cliff got him to talk to him about something, and he'd say, Oh, I recognize that armor from anywhere. You thieving scum, or something like that. And it just kind of absolutely ruins the immersion of the world when characters literally flip flop back and sweet back and forth between, oh, you're you're now the leader of the 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 mages guild, and I heard you saved lives or whatever, and then immediately after, oh, what is it? Someone stole your sweet roll. That's not the line. It's um, let me guess. Someone stole your sweet roll, but you get what I mean. It's kind of a weird feeling to just pass by an NPC that immediately praises you and then just leaps into just berating you for something really small and minute. Sometimes it's not even like, you know, them calling you out for doing something bad or being a part of a bad group. They just, you know, have generic dialogue that sounds pretty rude uh, immediately after saying something nice to you. And it's just this weird kind of disconnect from the world because he just praised you and said you like that you're a hero, but now is insulting you because of the fact that like sometimes not for any reason, just because you're standing there, because you exist in their environment. I just I have a huge problem with that. Another kind of RPG-esque problem I have with Skyrim is kind of the feeling of the world, if that makes any sense. This is more just kind of my own personal opinion. Uh, this is mostly just personal opinions, actually. I shouldn't say that this is personal opinion. It's all personal opinions, but Skyrim kind of has this problem with its world that I just can't really can't really get into. I can never really get into Skyrim anymore, uh, ever since it first came out. When it first came out, I was just the most excited for Skyrim, and I played it all the time, and I loved Skyrim. But now it's kind of... the world is just uninteresting. I can't... Like, Elder Sc the world of Elder Scrolls is interesting. Tamriel. I want to explore every facet of Tamriel, which is why even though people complain about it, like some fans of Skyrim or Elder Scrolls in its entirety complain about it, I do love the idea of Elder Scrolls 6 taking place in Elsewhere, the land of the Khajiit, or um, Black Marsh, the, the place where uh, Argonians live, or maybe the land of the Red Guards, I forgot their environment's name, um, because I love the world, I find it super interesting, and it's cool to, like, immerse yourself in that new environment, but Skyrim is just kind of, think of Oblivion's kind of grassy, tree environment, add a, a pinch of snow, because even though Skyrim is supposed to be in a frozen inhospitable land it's also not really though because 
there's not much in the way of snow. It's supposed to be a place in which you could barely live. Somewhere that's just constantly snowing to the point where you can you can't even farm because the land is just constantly frozen over. That sounds great. It sounds super interesting for an environment. But Skyrim is just kind doesn't Skyrim the game doesn't really do what Skyrim the environment promises. You do get places with a lot of snow, and as I said in the previous video, you, like there are some environments that are just complete whiteout that you can't see anything. Uh, well, almost anything. Uh, not really. You can still kind of see most, most things, but what one would think when they're a fan of the Elder Scrolls in Hero Skyrim is you think of just complete, just snow covering everything being just being unable to just interact with the world without having to view snow at almost all times it's just constant snow everywhere the edges of like skyrim are just completely green maybe sometimes it'll be snowing a, just a little little bit on those edges on the edges of the map but it's or, no, the middle of the map is what's mostly greenery. You get my point. There's a lot less snow than there should be in Skyrim. And it just kind of looks all generic at that point. Imagine this, like, high-scale fantasy RPG taking place in a, just a completely barren snowy... Well, not completely barren, but just a, a frozen over just land. That would be super interesting... Because, you know, you've got a million different RPGs that take place in, uh, like, your snowy environment. Uh, not snowy, sorry, I'm mixing up my words. In this grassy trees environment. Just think of Oblivion and, let's say, Dragon's Dogma and stuff like that. We've already got, like, a bunch of Western RPGs that take place in just this kind of normal, kind of average grasslands and trees maybe some plains even some of my favorite uh like rpgs and stuff like uh the witcher 3 most of the gameplay i've had is just on snowy not i keep saying snowy on these grasslands and trees and plains and stuff like that and it's a fine environment but it's kind of generic and in skyrim I would have thought we would have gotten this supposedly just Fallout 4, but with snow. Just this wasteland of just snow that's barely livable. And you hear these characters talking about how just absolutely frozen it is and how it's near impossible to live in. But when I look at it, it looks lovely. I'd live there. I'd live in Skyrim if not for the monsters and the dragons and stuff like that. This is fine. I got the hiccups. And... I... I would have... You can fix this with mods on PC, that's for sure. You can make Skyrim actually look like how it's supposed to look, which is this just excessively just snow, freezing cold temperatures. That sounds great. If I had a PC, oh my goodness, I would totally turn Skyrim into this just horrible snowy environment with mods because, you know, that's what I was promised. Uh, another thing I wanted to complain about in this video that's more about, like, the RPG elements, I think I already said that, I'm just looping back on myself now, is the, the lack of a mechanic that I really adored in, uh, I think it was in Oblivion. I believe it was in Morrowind, I'm not entirely sure, but the ability to make your own spells. Now, this didn't need, if, if you wanted to, not dumb down the game, but like, simplify it a little bit so that it could be more accessible to people, you could have, you know, pulled back the spell making uh, a little bit, or added it in as a DLC, because you've got you know, three pretty good DLC that came out, you know, a fourth one that was just kind of small and added a new mechanic would have been kind of neat. 
Uh, but spell making, spell making was super interesting. You know, changing some of the aspects of the spells. It didn't even need to be super complex. It could have just been like, you know, your character learns a spell type, like let's say the biting frost, and then you just use some type of currency, like maybe uh, ingredients for potion making. Uh, you just use that to spend that to like let's say increase the damage output of that spell or you know the area of effect or something like that just can't like being able to tweak certain things about it that'd be super interesting but sadly we don't see it in skyrim even though it was in previous uh iterations previous games in the series is what i meant to say and it's kind of sad to see gone because it was a super interesting aspect of uh, the previous games that I really enjoyed. I uh, haven't played uh, Oblivion in a while uh, due to some PS3 issues and I lost my uh, saves so you know I gotta play Oblivion from the beginning and after you spend hours on like a single game it kinda you don't wanna play it again unless you had like completed the game and said okay now it's time to go for something else but whatever uh, that's not the point of this video so, it's a little bit sad to see that kind of thing go. Um, we do have potion making, which I kind of wish had its own perk tree. Because one of my favorite perk trees in uh, Skyrim, one of the things I had the most fun with, was the uh, what smithing. The smithing was super fun. Uh, especially when combined with the ability to build your own house. And I basically just became a roving shopkeeper who made his own weapons and armor and would sell it to, like, traders and people in, in the stores and, like, town and stuff. But, yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments, you can put them in the comments. And I hope to see you cool cats in the next video.